One of the things you spoke about, which interested me because it's my hometown, well, not my hometown, but I'm very close to it, was the Dunblane shooting. Oh, dear. From Thomas Hamilton, right. 1996, where 16 kids were killed. Yes. You spoke a lot of detail. There's more to that story there is. than first thought. And I was very intrigued with that. Yeah. Can you explain this? Well, see, now this is where I consider myself incredibly blessed because I've built up a, a reputation for having integrity. I do have integrity. That's important to me. So people trust me. And I've had um, two young, actually my, three now, I think, who were all in classes with Thomas Hamilton. And they talk about how they were, they were young boys at the time um, because he used to run like sports clubs and everything. He always did everything he could to, again, to be near young people. And he'd do things like, you know, make them take off the top and their top and run around like bouncing their little boys with their little nipples and do you know what I mean stuff like that and he'd make comments on them and he'd do all that kind of stuff so I, I, I've managed to gather a lot of quite rich information from people who were there so Thomas Hamilton what we knew about him was and even the files that came out after the shooting anyway so as you say 16 children and their teacher killed I think 15 were injured he was also dead. He was somebody who had a huge interest in guns. The story of Thomas Hamilton has yet to be told. His files are sealed for 100 years. Um, we know that he was a soci He was a highly liked that he was a paedophile. Certainly he had paedophilic interest, no doubt about that. But he was also, uh, it would appear that he was very associated with people in like um, Scottish um, establishment as well as the British establishment and um, one of the military schools that he was associated with well Prince Philip the Queen's husband was the patron for ex just one example um, there was a great deal of rumours about involvements to do with Tony Blair um, but uh, Thomas Hamilton the official story obviously is he went into Dunblane lost, lost his mind killed these children and their teacher um, turned the gun on himself. He did turn on the gun on himself, mm -hmm. didn't he? Yeah, turned the gun on himself. And then, of course, what then happened is we then had the new gun laws. So Thomas Hamilton's act brought in the banning of handguns in the UK. Quite significant, eh? Yeah. Um, and uh, and as I say, the files sealed for 100 years. It's not uncommon for files to be sealed. 75 years. That, exactly. Now, that is the most common. And sometimes they get doubt, but they're not downgrading this. And so there is obviously the suggestion that we are talking about people in both the English and Scottish elite who are named in those files and who are being protected in 100 years' time. We're not going to be They'll here, be are we? Anyway. We're done. Yeah. So why, did it, why is that allowed to keep files for like 75 years, 100 years? Well... Is that a big ma major cover-up as well for... Well, well it, it's not supposed to be. And actually, mm. again, I always try and find, well, what would be their rationale for that rather than just look at it as being conspiratorial? Mm -hmm. Try and find the rationale for it. Sometimes it does bear out. Now, you've got to... Sometimes there's information in these files which could compromise our national safety individual safety of people i understand all that makes absolute sense but when you're talking about a situation like thomas hamilton where the perpetrator is dead anyway right um this is of national interest we should all know exactly who he was associated with you know because look i'm not saying that you can always judge a man or woman by who they associated with. Because I, I don't always think that birds of a feather flock together. You know, I, sometimes I could have a picture taken with somebody who I've only known five minutes, but that picture could go down. Everybody could say she's known that person forever and they're this. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's quite difficult. Sometimes you end up in the company of people who are unsavory and you don't necessarily know that and you get caught out. But we are talking about a man whose actions not only blighted the lives and devastated the lives of children and families, but new laws were enacted because of him. This is serious. Mm -hmm. This this should this impacts us all. We should know the details of it. So it's a curious situation, but I'm still receiving more information about that. And I do you hope, think MK Ultra was in play there? Well, some him? people do say that. Some people do say that. And again, we should remember that that is a legitimate thing. You know yeah. that the CIA used to use, and and that is a legitimate program that has been used for yeah. many decades. Not, it's Barbara not impossible. Barbara O'Hare again says they use that Aston Hall. They used to use MK Ultra, where they controlling the mind and right. telling the kids what to do, and they were forcing the kids to walk off cliffs. Right. I mean, none of that surprises me. Yeah. It doesn't surprise me, and I wish it did. Mm -hmm. I wish I said, "Get away with you." That's Do you ever get scared that the stuff that I'm not too deep into all this stuff because I'm going to be honest, I don't really know enough right. about it to be 
is honest. Why is that? Do you know what I mean? It's, um, I don't have all the information, but when you do start speaking, I, I do speak to a lot of people, but it's nothing concrete for me. Right. But the information that you do get, it doesn't mind fuck you. Yeah. It becomes draining, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, it does. Do you does. know what I mean? To see all this information it and people does. are so 95 X Factor on a Saturday night, bottle of wine. Yeah. But when we're hearing all the other stuff, like I spoke to Barbara O'Hare, Stephen Smith, who was the boy in the cellar who also went through it at Aston right. Hall. Because I've got kids myself and you think, fuck me, man, did this stuff yeah. really go on? Yeah. It's scary. Are you a survivor yourself, Sonia? Yes, I am. I yeah. am. And, um, you know, when mum died, a, a distant relative was allowed to get too close mm-hmm. to me. Um, and I was abused. And uh, and I that was one of the reasons why I attempted suicide on two occasions. So my life was hell. And you notice when you asked me about that period, I kind of just went from 11 to you 18. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't but, want to touch on it. I didn't well, want no, to... no, I, no, I don't mind because yeah. I'm, I'm completely open. But I wanted to touch on it because that, this is what drives you yes. to get the answers. Yes, uh, it that, is. Because maybe nobody thought your corner back then. So you yeah. know what it's like to try and go down that route and get the answers. Yeah. Is yeah. that where you think you get your strength for, from? I think I have a deep sense of injustice which rages through mm. me, right? And I think that's for a number of reasons. One, yes, because I was abused, but not just that, because we were also seen as that sort of shameful family. So I carried shame anyway, you know, um, and we were impoverished. So I had all of these things. So it's like, I often say this is not a career, it's a calling. I think that I was crafted, right? Mm. I think we all are. But it's just whether you want to Believe be in tune or that or not. But I feel I was crafted. And I feel that everything that happened to me was completely relevant. Like there's nothing I'd change now. I wouldn't even change the abuse as much as it devastated me and that contributed to my breakdown. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't even change that now because it gives me such a layer of empathy towards people who have been down low without a voice. Mm-hmm. You can't buy that stuff. You can't, you know, you can't become that stuff. It, yeah. it, 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 that's learned behavior. It's something that you know. Yeah. So, yeah, that informs me, definitely. Yeah. And that's why I want to touch on it, because that is where you get your strength, because you are mm-hmm. a fighter. And like you say there, it's like, sometimes we need to go through the bad shit in my life yeah. to become the warriors, the right warriors, whatever yeah. you want to call it, yeah. to try and do the right thing. Yeah. Because we know how fucked up it is to be in hell. And I'm myself and Cody's been in hell not just one time but many times. Right. And I've been blessed to eventually get myself out of it. Right. It still worries me that you could potentially slip back or whatever with negative thoughts or bad days, whatever. But I believe I'm on a path as well. And I don't know what it is. I just love what I do, man. Yeah. And like yourself, yeah. you're constantly trying to get answers. Yeah. You're on your path, but the stuff you uncover is a lot deeper than what I do. 